everyone, this is our third episode of our podcast, Dermatologist Talks Science of Beauty. I'm Chelsea, and today, together with accredited dermatologist Dr. Tio Wan Lin, we're going to round out our series on the post pandemic beauty, skincare, and dermatology industry by discussing at home facial devices, especially relevant now that we're at home more. Hi, Chelsea. A very big hello to all our listeners on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. This is Dr. Tio Wan Lin, and in this podcast, Dermatologist Talks Science of Beauty, we're going to cover some of the hottest topics all over the world um, in the field of science, beauty, and dermatology. So, Dr. Tio, this is a topic that I'm interested in hearing from you about. So I know that over the past few years, technology and skincare have collided more than ever, with so many high-tech technologies and tools that used to only be found in a dermatologist clinic, but are now available for at-home use. You obviously are an expert in and are one of the pioneers of the at-home facial device industry. So I was wondering if you could break down some of the best technology to look out for and the tools that deserve a spot on our bathroom shelves. The home facial uh, treatment technologies have been rapidly evolving um, in the last couple of years. And I would say that it uh, is first of all derived from what has already been uh, practiced in a clinical setting. Now, um, in the field of dermatology, uh, there are some technologies which uh, I, I saw was imminently transferable to a home device. The technologies we have incorporated in our home uh, facial devices are radio frequency, uh, EMS, and uh, the concept of vacuum microdermabrasion, um, as well as physical microdermabrasion. Um, in our case, we use a, a copper ion uh, hit. Now, let me just go a little bit more in depth into the uh, science behind each of this. So radio frequency has been used for a long while, actually, um, in the cosmetic dermatology and the aesthetics industry as well. Um, you do not need to um, you know, even hold a medical license in order to operate a radio frequency device. Uh, the good thing, though, is that um, it actually is extremely safe. There are no specific concerns, unlike with lasers or IPL. Um, but the, the issue here also is to recognize the um, the layers, right, that uh, radio frequency targets and, and how it plays uh, a role in um, anti-aging. So we know that chemical peels and lasers, they target the superficial layers of your skin with lasers moving a little bit deeper into the dermis. But radio frequency, it goes a little bit deeper than that. So by targeting the deep structures of your face, you're able to improve the elasticity of your skin, overall have a lifting effect due to uh, collagen stimulation and um, you know the, the very accessibility of a home device means that you are able to do it as often as you want. For electrical muscle stimulation um, or EMS as it is short form um, is commonly referred to as, uh, what happens is that we are using a, an electric current to give your face a, a little bit of a, a physical workout. Now the stimulation of muscle contractility is a little bit akin to do you doing um, you know high intensity interval sort of exercises for your body and overall it's been proven to um, you know, stimulate the growth of fibroblasts and its function in um, producing collagen. Now, we're going to just touch briefly on microdermabrasion. So a lot of us are familiar with the um, diamond microdermabrasion that's used in clinics. And um, what is interesting is that in the last five to six years, there has been, um, you know, a surge in popularity of 
um, what we call these metafacials, which are essentially based off the principle of vacuum microdermabrasion to increase antioxidant delivery to the skin. So, um, you know, you have your hydrofacial, we have the Korean um, types of metafacials. These are all very similar in terms of uh, what it's doing to increase the absorption of the cosmeceuticals to skin. Now, the two things that are relevant here would be the uh, ability to replicate this vacuum effect with a handheld device. And the second would be um, the quality of the solutions that are being delivered. So, you know, you've seen a lot of these vacuum, um, oh, sorry, blackhead um, vacuum devices that, that suck out your blackheads, etc. Now, that's not what we're talking about. And, you know, if, if you want to talk a little bit about that, just know that it's rather futile. Um, anybody who's ever used these devices know that once, that you, once you have, um, you know, physically removed the blackheads, either with the vacuum device or with a pore strip, it reaccumulates again and your blackheads actually never go away. So um, that's certainly not the way to treat it. But vacuum microdermabrasion does have a function when it's used together with cosmeceutical solutions. So these devices should deliver much less suction than um, traditional vacuums, which can cause a lot of trauma, irritation to skin, just enough to stimulate the growth of your uh, fibroblasts um, and also to enable the uh, absorption of cosmeceuticals. So uh, antioxidants that we use are uh, botanicals, right? So you have the, the very popular Potulaca oleracea extract, or it's also known as purse name, Centella asiatica. It's uh, well evidenced for uh, its anti-inflammatory um, as well as the um, you know ability to to heal uh, scars, and um, you also have a bunch of the moisturizing ingredients that we you know we have all become very familiar with. You have uh, hyaluronic acid, which really is is the uh, colloquial term for sodium hyaluronate. Um, there are the different types. Uh, of uh, the hyaluronic acid molecule. So the, the multi-molecular weighted uh, sort of formulations are the ones that will be absorbed better by skin. Now, I, I'm just going to touch on the um, other type of dermabrasion, which is a physical microdermabrasion process. Um, so the diamond microdermabrasion tip is obviously too harsh um, and impractical to use in a, a home setting. And it's certainly not what I recommend, uh, but we actually use a much less abrasive copper related structure. And, um, you know, you may have heard about copper in my um, other uh, materials, uh, in my other research uh, done on our biomaterials. Um, and it's really because copper itself has been proven in both in vivo and in vitro studies, meaning both in, uh, in the uh, clinical setting as well as uh, in um, laboratory tests to have uh, potent effects on stimulating the anti-aging molecules that um, you know increase collagen production. So this copper ion head that we use for our uh, dermabrasion tool um, has dual functions. First, as a physical microdermabrasion tool to um, just enable the uh, top layer of your skin, which is formed by the epidermis joined by the keratin keratinocytes uh, to renew itself. Um, this is something that contributes directly to um, you know, skin radiance, for example. And it's why you find that for a slightly older person, their skin is less radiant than for a younger person in the absence of cosmetic interventions. Um, the the other function is that it, the direct contact of the copper ions itself from the metal uh, helps to have the whole host of anti-aging and immunomodulating effects, which we discussed before. Well, thank you for that, Dr. Tu. It's a little bit crazy to see how far we've come in terms of technology and skincare. So that about sums up our episode. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. <laughs>